Welcome to the 2024 CDL School Bus Practice Test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, how often is a school bus driver required to get a physical exam? A, every two years. B, whenever determined by the driver's employer. C, when CDL is renewed. D, every 13 months. The correct answer is D, every 13 months. It is important that school bus drivers maintain good health by getting regular yearly physicals. If there is a health issue discovered during a driver's physical, they may need to be taken off the road. Many times a driver can continue to drive while taking special precautions. Many times when there is a health issue, such as diabetes or high blood pressure, a driver might need to get more frequent checkups during the year. Question 2. How often does a school bus endorsement need to be recertified? A. Every four years. B. Every two years. C. Every year. D. Every five years. The correct answer is A. Every four years. The law requires that a school bus endorsement is renewed every four years. To be recertified, a driver must complete 10 hours of instruction and pass the S endorsement knowledge exams. The recertification must occur in the same class school bus that the driver is licensed to operate. Question 3. A driver should activate the bus's turn signal blank before turning. A. 25 feet when driving less than 35 mph and 50 feet when driving faster than 35 mph. B. 250 feet when driving less than 35 mph and 300 feet when driving faster than 35 mph. C. 100 feet when driving less than 35 mph and 300 feet when driving faster than 35 mph. D. 200 feet when driving less than 35 mph and 500 feet when driving faster than 35 mph. The correct answer is C. 100 feet when driving less than 35 mph and 300 feet when driving faster than 35 mph. Drivers need to give other motorists time to react when they are maneuvering the school bus. In certain conditions such as heavy traffic, rain, snow, and fog, the driver should allow more time to warn other motorists. Question 4. What type of fuel is used for a school bus? A. Diesel. B. Gasoline. C. Propane. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Knowing what type of fuel is very important. If the wrong fuel is used, significant engine damage will occur. Diesel fuel is used for larger vehicles and gasoline is used for smaller vehicles. Propane is not often used for school buses and requires special procedures when fueling. Question 5. Students that are blank have increased risk of being run over by their own school bus. A. Elementary age. B. Middle school age. C. High school age. D. All the above. The correct answer is A. Elementary age. Many times, elementary students are impulsive and not aware of danger. Sometimes students will drop an item and run back to the bus, putting them at risk. They are also smaller and sometimes harder to see. Drivers must always perform multiple mirror checks and make sure all students are accounted for before moving the bus. Question 6. How many mirrors are on a school bus? A. 5 B. 10 C. 7 D. 8 The correct answer is C. 7 Mirrors are an important safety feature, and candidates will be trained to correctly adjust each mirror according to the federal mirror standards. Mirrors on the left side of the bus include a left side flat and a left side convex. Mirrors in front of the bus include a left front crossover and a right front crossover. On the right side of the bus is a right side convex and a right side flat. An interior overhead rear view mirror is inside the bus, located above the driver. Question 7. Blank is when a light has been green for a while and is probably ready to change. A. Stale green. B. Sweezer, C. Restrictor, D. Tailgater. The correct answer is A. Stale green. Drivers need to be aware of stale green lights when driving. 
especially with a full passenger load. When a traffic light is green in the distance, it is most likely to change by the time the driver approaches the light. The driver needs to slow down and be prepared to stop if the light changes. Question 8. Blank determines blood alcohol concentration. A. What type of alcohol is being consumed? B. The amount of alcohol consumed, how fast it is consumed, and the weight of the drinker. C. Drinking outdoors in fresh air. D. None of the above. The correct answer is B. The amount of alcohol consumed, how fast it is consumed, and the weight of the drinker. School bus drivers must always make sure they have enough recovery time between drinking and driving a school bus. Many school runs start early in the morning, and if drinking late, there could still be alcohol in the driver's system. Drivers should be aware of how much alcohol they are consuming and how fast. Drivers with a low body weight are especially at risk of having high alcohol concentration levels. Question 9. What should a driver do if a student has a seizure while on the bus? A. Move anything that could be a hazard to the student. B. Hold them down firmly. C. Continue on Rudy and let the seizure pass. D. Put a soft object in their mouth to prevent choking. The correct answer is A. Move anything that could be a hazard to the student. If a student begins to have a seizure, the driver should pull the bus over to a safe location and activate hazard lights. The driver should be clear of any hazards and prevent any injuries. Putting anything in someone's mouth and holding them down when they are having a seizure could cause more harm. Question 10. When crossing a railroad, the driver should make sure the containment area is the length of the bus plus blank. A. 50 feet. B. 25 feet. C. 10 feet. D. 15 feet. The correct answer is D. 15 feet. A driver must make sure there is enough space in the containment area before crossing railroad tracks. If there is not enough space, the end of the bus could remain on the tracks while the bus is stopped. The driver should always make sure the containment space is the length of the bus, plus 15 feet, to ensure the bus will clear completely. Question 11. When are students at the highest risk for injury or death? A. When a driver stops at a railroad crossing. B. During bad weather. C. When loading and unloading the school bus. D. During emergency evacuation drills. The correct answer is C. When loading and unloading the school bus, students are at a high risk while loading and unloading the school bus more than while they are on the bus. Many accidents occur when drivers ignore traffic signals. Drivers must be vigilant and looking out for drivers that pass their lights and make sure all traffic is stop it before allowing students to load and unload the bus. Question 12. When a school bus is stopped to load and unload students, the transmission must be placed in blank. A. Second gear. B. Neutral. C. First gear. D. None of the above. The correct answer is B. Neutral. When the bus is stopped to load and unload students, the bus must always be secured. First, the driver must apply the emergency brake and then put the bus in neutral. When it is time to continue driving, then the bus should be put back in drive before the emergency brake is released. To prevent the bus from rolling, it should never be in neutral when the brake is not applied. Question 13. When outside mirrors are properly adjusted, the school bus driver should be able to see blank behind the bus. A. 15 feet. B. 4 bus lengths. C. 1 bus length. D. 60 feet. The correct answer is B, four bus lengths. Mirrors should be adjusted to each individual driver and be part of a pre-trip inspection. Many times drivers need to change buses or multiple people use one bus and mirrors need to be readjusted. If a driver needs help adjusting their mirrors, a trainer may help them with a mirror grid to make sure there is a clear view in all mirrors. Question 14. Most school bus accidents are caused by blank. A. Student behavior. B. Improper bus maintenance. C. Driver error. D. 
brake failure? The correct answer is C, driver error. Distractions, poor health and bad attitudes are some factors that result in driver errors. It is important that drivers get enough sleep, eat healthy and remain calm and alert. Leaving on time will prevent a driver from rushing and making unnecessary mistakes. Question 15. When should a school bus evacuation be performed? A. Every month. B. Once a year. C. Two weeks from the first day of school and in March. D. When returning from school break. The correct answer is C. Two weeks from the first day of school and in March. School bus evacuations are an important time to remind students of the bus rules and regulations and remind them what to do in the case of an emergency. The emergency exits should be shown to students and demonstrated. The driver should show the students how to use the two-way radio and what to do in case the driver loses consciousness. Question 16. During a school bus pickup or drop-off, what should the driver be least concerned about? A. Students running late to the bus or back to the bus. B. The dashboard controls. C. Accounting for all students. D. Mirror checks. The correct answer is B. The dashboard controls. When dropping off or picking up students, the driver's main concern should always be the student's safety. Drivers should continually be checking traffic and accounting for students' locations. Dashboard controls can be checked after it is determined. All kids on the bus are at a safe location. Question 17. Most school bus fatalities occur near the blank. A. Rear wheels of the bus. B. In front of the bus. C. Outside the service door. D. Front wheels of the bus. The correct answer is A. Rear wheels of the bus. The most dangerous area in the 10 feet danger zone is the rear wheel tires, and this is where most school bus fatalities occur. Drivers should always look for students running late for the bus, especially in the early morning when it is still dark. In the afternoon, younger children are at an increased risk and sometimes run back to the bus to retrieve an item they dropped or talk to other students still on the bus. Checking mirrors before the bus moves helps prevent accidents and keeps students safe. Question 18. What is not true about a school bus? A. It must be owned by the school district. B. It is a motor vehicle designed to carry more than 10 people. C. It is used to transport students to and from school or school-related activities. D. Type C is the most common school bus on the road. The correct answer is A. It must be owned by the school district. A school bus does not need to be owned by a school district. A school bus is leased, contracted to, or operated by a school, school board, or school district. There are eight different types of school buses, and C is the most common one used. Question 19. Students in kindergarten or elementary school are more likely to blank. A. Rebel against authority. B. Be sensitive to adult criticism. C. Talk about other students. D. Be concerned with image. The correct answer is B. Be sensitive to adult criticism. When dealing with students, school bus drivers should not treat everyone the same. Younger children can be sensitive, and drivers should be gentle and clear when correcting them. Middle school students are more concerned with their image, and drivers should try to correct them in privés to avoid embarrassing them in front of their peers. High schoolers are usually quiet and just want to ride home. Question 20. During a pre-trip, Drivers make sure emergency exits open properly, the buzzers are working, and they are blank. A. Clean. B. Properly numbered. C. Properly labeled. D. Have a yellow handle. The correct answer is C. Properly labeled. In the event of an emergency and the students are not able to exit the service door, they must use one of three different emergency exits. Emergency doors are located at the back and sometimes side of the bus. There are one or two emergency hatches in larger buses, and they are located on the roof of the bus. There are usually four emergency windows, 
two on each side of the bus. All emergency exits must open properly, have a working buzzer, and be properly labeled with an emergency exit sign. Question 21. What should a school bus driver do first in the event of an accident? A. Assess the situation to keep it from getting worse until help arrives. B. Perform medical care. C. Get names and numbers of students. D. Call parents. The correct answer is A. Assess the situation to keep it from getting worse until help arrives. The first priority in an accident is to keep the situation from escalating and making sure students are safe. The driver should determine if it is safer for the students to remain on the school bus or if they should be evacuated. It is important to remain calm and clearly communicate location and general details to dispatch and emergency personnel. Question 22. What areas of the school bus must be inspected daily? A. Inside. B. Exterior. C. Mirrors. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. Drivers must conduct a pre-trip inspection when they are using a bus for the first time every day. Performing daily inspections helps prevent breakdowns on the road and is important for the driver and passenger safety. Question 23. Blank mirrors should be used to check 200 feet behind the bus, along the sides of the bus and the rear tires touching the ground. A. Left and right crossover. B. Passenger rear view. C. Left and right convex. D. Left and right flat. The correct answer is D. Left and right flat. Left and right flat mirrors may be used in conjunction with the left and right convex mirrors. It is important to have a clear view of the rear of the bus for students who may be running late or running back to the bus. Question 24. Depending on the length of the bus, the blind spot behind the bus can be up to blank. A. 50 feet. B. 100 feet. C. 35 feet. D. 400 feet. The correct answer is D. 400 feet. The blind spot behind a school bus is usually 50 to 150 feet. The size and length of the bus can affect the blind spot, which can extend up to 400 feet. Question 25. What document does not need to be carried while driving a school bus? A. Current insurance and registration. B. CDL with passenger and school bus endorsement. C. Maintenance report. D. Physical examination certificate. The correct answer is C. Maintenance report. School bus drivers must carry all the required documents while operating a school bus. The insurance and registration must be current and belong to the bus being operated. A DOT physical card is also required if a driver crosses state lines. Question 26. A school bus driver should blank when driving a bus with an anti-lock brake system. A. Quickly pump brakes. B. Brake in a normal manner. C. Press on the pedal hard. D. None of the above. The correct answer is B. Brake in a normal manner. All school buses that were manufactured after 1998 or 1999 are required to be equipped with an anti-lock brake system. Buses are equipped with an anti-lock brake system to prevent skidding. Buses manufactured before 1998 may not be equipped with anti-lock brakes, and the driver should recognize when brakes lock up and release pressure. Question 27. If water or slush is splashed on the windshield, or if the hood flies up, the bus driver should blank to keep a sense of direction. A. Activate strobe light. B. Look out the side window and use the center or edge lines on the road. C. Activate turn signal. D. Activate four-way hazards. The correct answer is B. Look out the side window and use the center or edge lines on the road. Losing visibility suddenly can cause a driver to lose sense of direction. Looking at the lines on the road can help the driver get back to know where the bus is on the road. Then the driver can slow down, pull over, and correct the situation if needed. Question 28. What should a driver do if wheels begin to spin while driving? A. Take foot off of the accelerator. 
B. Brake. C. Pump brakes. D. Gently press the accelerator. The correct answer is A. Take foot off of the accelerator. Different adverse weather conditions can cause roads to be slippery and unpredictable. If wheels begin to spin while driving, a driver should take their foot off the accelerator until the wheels gain traction. Question 29. After a school bus pickup or drop-off is completed, the driver should blank before moving the bus to proceed to the next stop. A. Check mirrors. B. Check gauges. C. Count students remaining on the bus. D. Check for items left behind. The correct answer is A. Check mirrors. Mirror checks should be done before, during, and after a school bus stop a railroad crossing and should be continued throughout a driver's route. Consistent mirror checks give the driver a clear view of the danger zone around the bus and help protect students, pedestrians, and other drivers. Question 30. Front tire tread should be no less than blank. A. 232 inch. B. 334 inch. C. 432 inch. D. 434 inch. The correct answer is C. 432 inch. Tire tread on the front wheels of the bus should be no less than 432 inch and cannot be recapped. The rear wheels should have no less than 232 inch and can be recapped and must match. Tread on both front and rear tires must have even wear and the inside and outside tire wall must be free of abrasions, bubbles, or cuts. Question 31. For blank of parents, the school bus driver is the only school official the parent has talked to. A, 25%, B, 40%, C, 60%, D, 85%. The correct answer is D, 85%. As a school representative, the bus driver is the only person that most parents interact with. School bus drivers should always present themselves in a polite and respectful manner. Sometimes a parent will have concerns about their kids on the bus, and the driver should always be open to listen to concerns and respond accordingly. Question 32. What is the danger zone around a school bus? A. 10 feet around the bus. B. Near the tires. C. In front of the bus. D. The rear of the bus. The correct answer is A. 10 feet around the bus. 10 feet completely around the school bus is considered the danger zone. When school bus lights are activated, cars should stop 10 feet away. Drivers must pay close attention and use their mirrors to check the danger zone when loading and unloading passengers. Question 33. What are some risk factors at a railroad crossing? A. View obstructions. B. Pedestrians. C. Broken railroad signals. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. Railroad crossings can be dangerous and drivers must remain vigilant in performing proper procedures and remaining alert. Drivers should always make sure the bus is secure and the door is open to check for oncoming trains and pedestrians. The driver should move back and forth and side to side to overcome visual obstructions. Students should be instructed to be quiet at a railroad crossing, and all noisemakers should be turned off. Question 34. When should amber warning lights be activated when doing a school bus pickup or drop-off? A. 250 to 100 feet. B. 350 to 200 feet. C. 300 to 150 feet. D. 50 to 15 feet. The correct answer is C. 300 to 150 feet. Amber warning lights should be activated 300 to 150 feet before a school bus stop. This alerts other drivers to slow down and come to a complete stop. When the bus driver determines that it is safe and all traffic has stopped, then the door is opened to activate the red school bus lights. Question 35. When should a strobe light be used on a school bus? A. In emergencies. B. During limited visibility. C. Only during snowstorms. D. All the above. The correct answer is B. During limited visibility. Strobe lights are used to alert other motorists that there is a school bus in proximity. This is especially important in adverse weather conditions such as rain, fog, and snow. Question 36. As a school bus driver, you should only share a student's confidential information with blank. A. 
anyone who has an educational interest in the student. B. A neighbor who will be meeting the student at the bus stop. C. A close family friend. D. None of the above. The correct answer is A. Anyone who has an educational interest in the student. It is required by law that all school records are confidential. School bus drivers are entitled to know certain information about a student's disability, and it is the driver's responsibility to keep this information confidential. A driver should check with their supervisor if they are unsure if someone has an educational interest in a student. Question 37. Which direction will the rear of the bus turn when driving forward and turning the wheel right? A. Left. B. Right. C. Will not swing. D. None of the above. The correct answer is A. Left. When driving forward, the rear of the bus will turn in the opposite direction that the steering wheel is turned. When driving in reverse, the rear end of the bus will turn in the same direction that the steering wheel is being turned. Question 38. Some signs of driver fatigue are blank. A. Missing traffic signals. B. Frequent blinking. C. Forgetting the last few miles. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. One of the responsibilities of a school bus driver is to get enough sleep to prevent driver fatigue. Medications can also be a factor in affecting a driver's alertness. Many over-the-counter medications have side effects that can affect a person's ability to drive safely. When taking medications, drivers should make sure they will have enough recovery time before their next run. Question 39. When crossing a railroad, the driver should blank. A. Tap brakes. B. Open door. C. Not stop. D. Turn on hazard warning lights. The correct answer is C. Not stop. The driver should never stop on railroad tracks and should continue once starting to cross. Turning on hazard warning lights should be done before the driver stops 50 to 15 feet before the tracks. When the bus comes to a complete stop, the driver should open the door and check for trains. Question 40. What are some emergencies that would require a school bus evacuation? A. Fire or threat of a fire. B. The bus is in danger of a collision or imminent danger. C. Flash flooding. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. Many times it is safer to have passengers remain on a school bus. It is easier to keep track of students, and the reinforced structure is designed to give extra protection. The bus should be evacuated when the driver determines there is an escalating danger for students if they remain on the bus. Question 41. Discipline that provides students with clear expectations and a common approach everyone understands is an example of blank. A. Hostile discipline. B. Assertive discipline. C. Non-assertive discipline. D. None of the above. The correct answer is B. Assertive discipline. Assertive discipline is most effective when setting limits for students, and it helps keep an orderly bus. Drivers should always be consistent and set clear expectations. This helps reduce conflicts and power struggles between the driver and passengers. Question 42. What mirrors are used to see students walking in front of the bus? A. Passenger rear view. B. Crossover. C. Convex. D. Flat. The correct answer is B. Crossover. Crossover mirrors are mounted at the right and left front fenders. When the crossover mirrors are adjusted properly, the driver should see directly in front of the bus, the front of the right and left front tires, and the area from the front bumper to the rear axle and 12 feet perpendicular to the side of the bus. Question 43. What is the cause of brake fading? A. Driving too fast. B. Excessive use of the service brake. C. Not getting brakes properly adjusted. D. Road conditions. The correct answer is B. Excessive use of the service brake. When driving a downgrade, drivers should check brakes at the top of the downgrade to make sure brakes are in good working order. 
Putting the bus in lower gear will help avoid fading caused by excessive braking. Question 44. Eight-way school bus lights must be blank on the outside and blank on the inside. A. Red. Red. B. Amber. Red. C. Red. Amber. D. Amber. Amber. The correct answer is C. Red. Amber. Eight-way school lights are an important tool in school bus safety. The lights must be checked daily to make sure they are the proper color, not cracked or damaged, clean, and do not have any fluid inside. Eight ways. Lights should always be red on the outside and amber on the inside. Question 45. Why is it important to maintain correct air pressure in the bus's tires? A. Makes the bus easier to control. B. Less shaking. C. Protects the tread. D. Less sluggish. The correct answer is A. Makes the bus easier to control. Checking tires is an important part of a pre-trip and should be checked daily and when stopping on long trips. A tire pressure gauge should be used to make sure the tire pressure is at 105 PSI. Question 46. What safety equipment is not found on a school bus? A. First aid kit. B. EpiPen. C. Reflective triangles. D. Body fluid cleanup kit. The correct answer is B. EpiPen. Some safety equipment is required by legislation, and some are installed in accordance with a school and or contractor's procedures. Safety equipment must be checked daily before a school bus goes out on the road. The first aid and body fluid. Cleanup kit must be readily accessible to the driver. A fire extinguisher must be fully charged and properly secure. Three reflective triangles are required and must be stored in a closed container. Question 47. Drivers should scan blank to blank seconds ahead to make sure there is room to maneuver bus safely. A. 12. 15. B. 6. 10. C. 15. 20. D. None of the above. The correct answer is A. 12. 15. It is important to know what traffic is doing on all sides of a bus. Because changing lanes or stopping can take a lot of distance, looking ahead will help the driver have enough time to maneuver the bus safely. Drivers should look further ahead when speed increases and should slow down when a hill or curve limits the driver's view. Question 48. What components on a school bus create blind spots? A. Mirrors. B. Brackets. C. Support columns. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. Some components on a school bus can block the view of pedestrians or other vehicles. Blind spots can become a challenge when turning a bus, and drivers must use special maneuvers to improve their view. Leaning forward and back, left to right, will help a driver overcome blind spots. Question 49. When a driver lines up fixed objects inside the bus with points outside the bus, this is called blank. A. Pivot point driving. B. Straight line point driving. C. Reference point driving. D. Defensive driving technique. The correct answer is C. Reference point driving. Reference point driving is a good technique to help drivers in different maneuvers, such as turning and backing up. A good time to use this technique would be when backing into a parking spot. By lining up a reference point with an object outside the bus can prevent the driver from backing up too far and hitting an object. Question 50. A school bus driver should blank if there is an interruption during a school bus pickup or drop off. A. Continue. B. Start the procedure over. C. Follow the next step. D check with students. The correct answer is B. Start the procedure over. All school bus issues should be attended to before or after a school bus stop. At times, a driver is interrupted by a student or event, and a driver could lose focus. If this occurs, the driver should start the procedure from the beginning and make sure all steps of the school bus stop are completed. All students getting on and off the bus should be accounted for before the bus moves. Question 51. 
The Good Samaritan Act protects a school bus driver from liability for administering emergency care if the driver A. Saves a life B. Ask permission C. Is currently certified in first aid or emergency care D. Has 10 years driving experience The correct answer is C. Is currently certified in first aid or emergency care the Good Samaritan Act was put into place to encourage bystanders to help in emergency situations without the fear of liability. In some emergency situations, immediate action before an ambulance arrives could save a life. Question 52. What are some harmful effects of a student being bullied? A. Loss of self-esteem and confidence. B. Having difficulty paying attention in school and getting poor grades. C. Dread and fear of attending school may display physical ailments. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. Bullying should always be taken seriously and can sometimes be hard to detect. Bullying behavior is intentional, unwanted, and one way. It can be in the form of physical or emotional harassment. It is the responsibility of all school personnel, including the bus driver, to protect students from bullying behaviors. Question 53. If warning signals malfunction at a railroad crossing, the driver should A. Keep the bus secure and do not cross. B. Call into dispatch. C. Wait for instructions. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. A driver should never cross tracks when warning signals are malfunctioning, even if there are no signs of a train. Dispatch should be notified, and they will give the driver instructions on what to do. Most likely, the police will be notified to direct the school bus over the tracks safely. Question 54. If a fight happens on a school bus, what should the driver not do? A. Use a distraction. B. Remove the audience. C. Use verbal communication. D. Physically separate students. The correct answer is D. Physically separate students. Trying to physically separate a fight may become a hazard to the driver and other students. A driver could become physically harmed and even knocked unconscious, leaving the bus without adult supervision. Drivers should notify dispatch and the police if serious. When a driver uses techniques such as verbal communication, removing the audience and using distractions, it becomes a safer situation. Question 55. What is the correct way to maneuver a bus when the right wheels get off the pavement? A. Quickly turn left. B. Slow down and gradually steer to the left. C. Slow down, turn sharply to the left. D. Turn left while driving at the present speed. The correct answer is B. Slow down and gradually steer to the left. When the wheels leave the pavement slowing down and gradually steer left will help the driver keep the bus under control. Any sudden or jerk steering can cause the bus to become difficult to maneuver and could easily lose control. Question 56. How often should a child's search be conducted? A. Every morning. B. At the school. C. Every time after the driver believes the last passenger has left the bus. D. After the last bus stop. The correct answer is C. Every time after the driver believes the last passenger has left the bus. Leaving a child unattended on a school bus is a serious matter and could lead to termination and criminal charges. A driver should never get off the bus until a child search has been conducted. All seats should be checked on top and underneath. Many school buses have an alarm system that requires drivers to deactivate in the rear of the bus to ensure a child search is conducted. Question 57. What is required to become a school bus driver? A. 14 hours of classroom instruction. B. Pass a commercial general knowledge test. C. 6 hours of in-bus training. D. All the above. The correct answer is D. All the above. To become a school bus driver, a candidate must pass a school bus driver physical examination 
and an application for a CDL learner's permit must be submitted with the required fee. The driver will be required to pass a vision screening along with a commercial general knowledge test. In addition, the driver must also pass a passenger endorsement test, school bus endorsement test, and air brakes test, if applicable. The candidate is required to complete 14 hours of classroom training and six hours of in-bus training. Following training, a candidate must pass a road test, including a pre-trip, basic maneuvers, and an on-the-road test. Question 58. Preventative maintenance should occur blank. A. During pre-trip inspection. B. During post-trip inspection. C. During pre-trip inspection, while driving and post-trip inspection. D. During weekly under-the-hood checks. The correct answer is C. During pre-trip inspection, while driving and post-trip inspection. It is important for a school bus driver to conduct a road test before picking up students. After the initial pre-trip inspection, a school bus driver must pay close attention to the bus's running condition. The driver should be aware of any unusual smells, pulls, or noises. During post-trip, the driver checks for any damage to the outside or inside of the bus. Question 59. When a school bus driver has been notified they have been selected for a random drug test, they have to report blank to their designated test site. A. 24 hours. B. Immediately. C. One week. D. Before the end of the workday. The correct answer is B. Immediately. All school bus drivers are required to have drug testing. Pre-employment testing is completed before the driver is officially employed and can begin driving a school bus run. Random testing is done without notice, and a driver must report immediately after their run to be tested. Post-accident testing is done whenever an accident has occurred, and there is vehicle damage. Question 60. When crossing railroad tracks, when should a driver turn off his hazard warning lights? A. When it is safe to cross the tracks. B. When the bus clears the tracks. C. When the bus has cleared the tracks plus 100 feet. D. All the above. The correct answer is B. When the bus clears the tracks, school buses must always stop at railroad crossings. To warn other drivers, the hazard warning lights should be activated approximately 100 feet before the tracks. When the bus crosses the tracks, the driver must make sure the end of the bus has cleared before deactivating the warning hazard lights. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.